we are at. Well, the Natural in, History Museum. We're in the garden of the Natural History Museum and we need to be able to see the chat. Let's see. Okay. There we go. So, hello, hello. Happy Monday. And look, we brought our own kitten. No, it's, it's no microphone. It's the microphone. Hello. <laughs> can I hold it? There's Heather and Ginny. Hello, hello. Can I, can I hold it? Yeah, but if you touch this, they're going to hear every noise. So we need to just get it in one spot. Hello. <laughs> So let's tell them about where we are today and then they'll answer some questions, okay? Let go of this and I'll hold on to it. So, yeah. So where are we? We are in the Garden of the Natural History Museum. We're in the Garden of the Natural History Museum. Can you hear us? Because we're actually off a busy road, so we're kind of taking a guess here. Can you hear us all right? <laughs> let's see. Is anyone Amy here? says she can hear us. Excellent. Loud and clear, says Laura. Good. So we have been to two special exhibits plus a little um, extra normal kind of exhibit or two. Um, so we'll tell you a little bit about what we did today. And then we'd love to answer any questions that you've got. Um, yeah. Um, someone said... Yes can near. Was that supposed to be a hair? Oh, yes can hear. Yeah, probably. Oh, hold on. I pressed the wrong button. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Okay, so we went, we, well, we came especially for um, the new Fantastic Beasts exhibit, which is very interesting. We should get your notebook out. Yes? Yes. Okay. Do you want to get it? It's in that back pocket of the backpack. I oh, know. Okay. So here's my... My, my thought about going to the Fantastic Beasts exhibit. So if you're not familiar with this, if you're here, you've se probably seen advertising for it. Um, but it's, it's a mix of the, um, the creatures from the Fantastic Beasts films, the, like the prequel Harry Potter films, and the real animals that inspired them. So my biggest worry was that sounds like something that would be really cool for his age group but those films are not for his age group so i was kind of concerned about how that would work i am happy to report that the exhibit basically takes what is in my opinion one of the two coolest things about the fantastic beast movies one of the best things about the fantastic beast movies is the costuming and the second thing, and the second best thing is Newt. Is Newt and all the animals that Newt, uh, all the creatures that Newt comes in contact with and tells us about. So that's all that's that's featured. It's just about Newt and the creatures that he takes care of and discovers and, and helps. And um, there's none of the other. There, there's really no other focus on the the plot line of those films at all and we don't see any reference to other characters there's and um, bunty's there that's his assistant and um, she's mentioned like as a footnote i'm afraid poor bunty um and there's one uh place where we see the wands of um lupin ron and draco in the unicorn section but what it does do is take a lot of the mythical creatures that we know from outside the wizarding world so things like unicorns what other creatures mer people mer people and dragons yeah and it looks at um the reasons why people believed in these kind of creatures and what animals they were probably seeing or digging up the bones of, um, and makes those connections between the two, and then puts in a separate case the um, the props from the film, and everything's really clearly labeled so that you can tell what is a real animal and what is a movie animal. Okay, WB, what did you enjoy about this exhibit? Um, Do you want to show them your book? One of the things that I enjoyed is doing stuff in this book. They can't they can't see the cover because it's got my real name. Okay, cool. So you can't you see, can the see, cover, see the inside. Yeah. But you can see the inside. So this might be backwards to backwards. No, it's upside down. It's okay, don't worry. Yeah, there you go. No, it's That's upside down. Turn it right way around. There you go. But it's, yeah, it's they'll be able it, it yeah, it's okay. It's one way around to you, sorry. That's okay. Can they will they be able I don't to know it? if it reverses it for them or not. They'll tell us. Nope, Debbie says they can see it the right way. It's just reversed for us. That's fine. Um so you can read this. 
and it has a different there's a couple pages for each kind of room in the gallery isn't it you want to show them what's yeah. inside so what kind of research did you have to do we've got to find things oh and we have to we have to, you're supposed to scan these keys on each page so there were tiny hidden creatures to find like but this then guy. that was niffler and then there are also things yeah, like shiny, like shiny can you tell them that section that says see if you can find that's a no no it was right under your thumb because that's a good um a good judge of how this is set up so what were what were you looking for yeah that first one animal bones that look like they could come from a dragon what creature they really belong to so yeah we did that so yeah so that was the sort of pitch level of like yeah so kids are looking for the evidence in the, the gallery to say, you know, what animal bones did people think were dragons or unicorns or um, what animals made a sound that, were, that people thought were mermaids. And we learned that Christopher Columbus thought he saw mermaids. Yeah, go on. So um, there's one that I want to tell you what the answer to it is, <gasps> which is this one. Okay, so what was that right question? Here. And that question was... Let me see. In my magic. Go backward. You've gone too. You've gone past it. Go back. Go back. <laughs> Pages are sticking together because it's raining. Some no, it isn't. Okay, come on. Um, some pe pe something that people thought was a unicorn's horn. What animal does it really come from? What animal did it I really come from? I want to tell you what it, the weird thing. It's what? So they mistaked a unicorn horn for being something else. What is it? Was it a horse? Oh, uh, orange Correct. Gina's got it. You got it. It's an owl. It was a narwhal. And did we see owl. one that had been carved way back when? Yeah. And so they had taken this narwhal tusk and carved the most intricate, like, little artwork into it it was super tiny and really detailed and then they would have sold that as like a super super magical item that could cure all your problems um i mean it would inspire you but <laughs> i don't know what it would really cure um yeah so we saw that up close didn't we and there was a narwhal horn that we could touch what there was lots actually that was interactive in that gallery wasn't there yeah so through the museum, it's taken out quite a few of the interactives um, so that you're not touching as much. Not all of it, but quite a few. But in this exhibit, there was loads that you could touch. And then just each one had a hand, 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 hand sanitizing section before and after. <laughs> so wash your hands before you touch it, wash your hands after you touch it, but then touch all the things. It's fine. Um, so that was really cool. And so, yes, narwhals are real. And once, I squatted myself and then um one of the rhino things but it has like a little um a oh an erumphant an erumphant yeah so you could um, spray a musk that would bring an erumphant coming out of the wall toward you because you smell really good yes and it would come sniffing out of the wall <laughs> yes yeah yes. and and what about the bow truckles Oh, and you had to, what you did is there was a big spot where you could walk over and then you had to try and get a tree. There was a tree, and if you got near the tree, who jumped out of the tree? A bow truckle. A bow truckle. A bow truckle. So they want to, they just went stuff like this. They oh. scream at you, <coughs> and they go, <coughs> and they jump all over the tree at you, and then if you back off, they quiet down and disappear. But if you get close to them, close to the tree, ah, they are defenders of the tree. I really hope nobody was wearing headphones just for them. Just then. <laughs> I'm sorry if we just blew your eardrums. Um, so yeah, mm. bow truckles. Um, and we saw. Um, did we see the shape shifting? Um, what's it called? Ah, da 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 da. Oh, maybe it's in your book. It's right on the tip of my tongue, and I can't think of the name of it. Keep going until you get to the shape-shifting animal section. <laughs> Alchemy. That's it. I kept wanting to say Oculus, and I was like, that's not right. <laughs> Alchemy. So we saw the teapot 
that Newt gets the alchemy to go into. So an alchemy is a fantastic beast that um, adjusts to take, it, its size adjusts to take up all the available space. Um, so obviously it would be tiny in a teapot, but it would be big in an attic. And Newt manages to take one from attic size down into a teapot. And they have that bit brought to life in the exhibit. So we saw it go right down into the teapot, didn't we? And then we learned about other animals that change size and stuff like that to go alongside it. Yes. One other thing, they show you a video of him doing it, but mm -hmm. then they also show you the real teapot. Mm -hmm. Did the tree just drop a water on? Or drop some water on you? My hand. Yeah, it's all right. It'll dry. It turned just from gold um, to. Ginny says, "Did you have to watch out for nifflers? We did, didn't we? Yeah. We had to find a baby niffler and find out what it had stolen. Sorry, I'm, I'm just going to apologize for bouncy." Um, bouncy camera today because I brought my little phone tripod but we couldn't get in a place where we wouldn't get absolutely soaked with rain and have a place to put it so I'm having to hold it. Sorry I hope I'm not making anybody seasick. Right anyway we had to find the baby Niffler and then there was an interactive with a Niffler in like an Aladdin's cave wasn't there? Yeah. And um, obviously not Aladdin's cave but filled with treasure and you could tap different parts of the cave and the Niffler would do different things and um, one of them was to turn the Niffler upside down and dump out all the stuff it had stolen. It was lots, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> yep. And then the very end of the exhibit focused on the animals that Newt was trying to save from extinction in the magical world and then showed how they all had counterparts in our world, didn't they? Yeah. So what animals did you see that, um, that people are having to work to conserve because otherwise they'll be gone? Do you remember? Uh, tigers. Research. Yep, tigers were in there. Tigers conflict with humans. Yep. Um, helmeted hornbills. Helmeted hornbills. Are being some yep. hunted for something that humans want. Yeah. That thing that humans want is their eggs because they're silver eggs. Oh, that was the alchemy. Yeah. The alchemy lays a silver egg so people would steal the eggs. Yeah. And the hornbill also had things that people wanted. And then we had animals with dangerously low populations. And what animals were those? Vaquas. Vaquitas. Yeah. And zooids. Yeah. Zooids. Yeah. So. And grafhorns, they are, their populations yeah. are dangerously low. So we saw, like, alongside, we'd see a little clip of how Newt was saving some fantastic beasts. And then we saw some real life scientists and how they were saving real life beasts, too. And that was it. And how long did it take us to go through that whole exhibit? An hour and a half. An hour and a half. Because we loved it. <laughs> so we went through and we did all the questions and all the interactives and it was about an hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. And um, then what other things have we seen today? And then we'll open up for questions. We went through the dinosaur hall. Yeah. And volcanoes and earthquakes. Yep. Yep. And erosion. Yeah. And um, then we went to... The... Our was it our broken planet. Earth, our yeah. broken planet, our broken planet, our broken planet, which is a new exhibit that's in fact not quite done. Um, so yeah, um, Nancy says, will this be on YouTube afterwards? Yes, they all go on. Um, they all go onto YouTube, and you can watch from the beginning. Oh, Georgia has the most important question. She wants to know what we had for lunch. Well, I'm afraid to say lunch has been. The not so great highlight, sorry, of the day. Because the Natural History Museum used to, they had four different, basically four different cafes and a, um, and a snack bar kind of place in the museum, because it's a big museum. But they are not all reopened. And the one that always did a really good variety of food that was kind of on it with allergens doesn't have their whole menu back. They just have prepped stuff. Um, they're not cooking hot food and the pizza restaurant where you would have gone in and been able, I mean, they did more than pizza, but they're mainly pizza, um, where you could actually order and then it would be cooked for you. That hasn't reopened at all yet. It's kind of like a dinosaur cafe because it has animatronics in it, but that's all boarded up. Um, so all you've got is like a Benugo. Um, so you can get salad and sandwiches, but it's all pre-made and I'm afraid none of it well, the only things that were dairy-free were, like, really super sophisticated grown-up things. So, what did you have for lunch? One delicious and so big 
granola bar. He had a granola bar for lunch and an <laughs> apple juice. And we're going to get something after we leave the museum. The only problem is if you go out, you can't come back in because you have to be booked in. So you, once you're in, you can stay as long as you want. But if we go out to get lunch somewhere else, we can't get back in. So you had a granola bar and you're feeling all right for the moment. But when we finish here, then we're probably going to go get some proper lunch. And now we can open up to qu more questions. More questions, he says. More questions. I want proper questions about Scrapper King or something. Okay. Orangina says, what would you like to see in a museum that you have not seen exhibited yet? Hmm. One of them isn't history, mm -hmm. but it would be nice to see. Yeah. And it's about science. Yeah. It's. You want to go to like a chemistry display? Yes. Big into chemistry at the moment. Okay. Yes. I think that probably falls under something like Wonder Lab, um, which is at the Science Museum. And I don't know if Wonder Lab is reopened or not because it's very hands-on. Um, but we will, we will investigate. So there we go, a chemistry exhibit. Um, Allison says, are we in the grounds of the museum now? Yes. So we are on the grounds of the National History Museum in their nature trail, which um, you can walk through and has different kind of habitats in one little place. But also you can see where, because Natural History Museum is, is also a working lab, has a section where scientists are currently working. And so we could see um, where different people are doing little experiments out here. We're not, they, they aren't written up, so you don't necessarily know exactly what they're looking for, but like we're right next to a pond that has a bunch of lily pads. And some of the lily pads have little tents with monitors on them. So we're wondering what they are studying in there. Um, and there's obviously lots of bird boxes and stuff like that. All right, what else we got? Um, oh, Sarah says chemistry is the best and she was a chemist at Disney World. Oh my goodness, that sounds right up your alley. Okay, Debbie says, what was your favorite part of today's museum experience? Okay, after this, can we please have something that isn't related to the museum? Oh, you want some? Yeah, there's non-museum questions in here too. Answer that one, and then there's a non-museum question. Um, there's a button on ours, and I'm eating it. You're eating that button. Okay. So did you have a favorite part? Um, Fantastic Beasts. That was your favorite exhibit today. Excellent. I love Newitz Commander. Yeah. Newitz Commander! Newitz Commander! So Karen says... For each of us, who is our favorite Disney character? Who is yours? Uh, my favorite Disney character is... Can I have a little bit of thinking time? You can think about so let's it. Let's do other so, questions. That, can they please... But can these questions There's please? lots of variety. Don't worry. Don't worry. They're giving us a variety. So mine is Alice. He normally says Mickey, but he wants to think about it today, so he might change his mind. Okay. Um, I'm really thinking. Can you say hi to Michaela? Hi, Michaela. Um, Ginny oh. says, any tips for taking photos at a museum? Be patient. Um, <laughs> the lighting in museums it tends to be dark, tends to be very artificial. <laughs> Um, and a little bit unpredictable. So one of the things that most people like to get a picture of at this museum is that there's a massive, like, life-size animatronic Tyrannosaurus Rex that growls at you. Um, but it's also lit very dramatically with all sorts of different colors of lights. So you have to wait because some of the lights just don't photograph. It ends up looking like a shadow. I mean, you could get um, something like fancy, but you're never going to get anything realistic to what you're experiencing. So you have to wait for the lights to cycle through. And then at the end of the colorful loop, there's this moment where the lights go through like a natural color. And that's where you can get it to actually look up, look like what you are, um, what you're getting and um, what you're experiencing. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll have a look at what I've taken today and post some tips alongside them. Um, but, yeah, a lot of it is about patience and having your ISO up high um, because a lot of the rooms are dark. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
Um, Nancy says, how many museums are close to where you live and which is your favorite? So where we live, like without having to take any transportation, we have a set of several that we can get to within like just a tiny, tiny um, walk. So we live um, by in near the Greenwich Museums. So that's um, the Royal Observatory, the National Maritime Museum, the Queen's House. Those three are linked um, along with the Cuddy Sark. Um, so they're all in a little network. Lots of it is free. Cuddy Sark is not. Um, or, and there's a planetarium in the observatory. So um, that's all just like a 10-minute walk from our door. Then, um, and then Greenwich also has a few other museums. We have the Ranger's House, which is um, an English... It's not National Trust. It's English Heritage, the other one. I'm on the spot now. I think English Heritage. Um, so that's like a an old fancy house that you can walk through with fancy gardens and um, artwork inside. But it's also where Bridgerton was filmed. So when you see Bridgerton, when it had all the wisteria on the front, that big kind of regal looking house. Um, the funny thing is there is no wisteria on the ranger's house. They did that all digitally. They didn't even like put it on there and then take it off again. It's digital. So that's right next to the park. So that's by our house as well. Now where we are today, We've taken the train and the tube, so we've traveled just shy of an hour on public transport. Um, I know that sounds ridiculous, but just keep in mind that you're in a city, so um, transportation times are different than like if you get in the car and drive somewhere. Um, so here on this road, right in a row, you have the Natural History Museum, the Science Museum, and the V&A. Um, and we are members at both the Natural History Museum and the V&A, but the Science Museum doesn't have membership. Um, they take donations, and most of the museum is free. The Wonder Lab has a ticket, but you can upgrade your ticket for a couple pounds so that it's good for a whole year. And if you live in the same, like if you're going to be able to make two trips, then I would definitely recommend that because Wonder Lab is really great for kids. Uh, kids of all ages, by the way. They don't have to be tiny. Okay, Georgia says you're a hungry dinosaur. Yeah. He's trying to eat the button that's on the screen. <laughs> yeah. It makes perfect sense where I can see him now, but it looks it's completely bizarre. Um, right. Why does it look com completely bizarre? Oh, bizarre. WB. Stacy's kids don't like being in pictures, but she wants pictures of them to scrapbook. Can you give her some tips so that her kids enjoy being in the pictures? What makes you enjoy don't being in the pictures? force them to go anywhere. Yeah. First thing, make them be able to have, here's a way that I would do it if I wouldn't. I would let them do whatever they like and then I would photograph, and then I would photograph them or I would, I would give them a special treat if they just did a picture. <laughs> bribery. What's bribery? give them a special treat if they agree to do the picture. <laughs> um, but yeah, we do a lot of let's play and then take a, a tiny break to have pictures and then play some more. And you get a lot of control in our picture, in our, in our picture, in our picturing. I don't know what I'm saying. When we take pictures, you make a lot of decisions, don't you? Yes? Am I going to get eaten? Oh, no. Okay. Ah! No! <laughs> Oh my I goodness. Bite you. Are you one of the We learned today that how many how, what percent of the world's mammals are wild? I'm one of the Yeah. Wilds. What what percent are you then? 29%. No. 4. Of that. Only 4% of the world's mammals are wild. I'm not a mammal. I'm a Was it 37% are human? Yeah. And the rest are livestock that we eat. Ah. Anyway, apparently he's the 4% and not the 30 per 37. Are you a wild animal today? Yeah. And yeah. I'm, I'm nearly yeah. all, I'm low, I take, I take up every <laughs> four actually equals Oops. base, each number yeah. is actually like 20 million animals. Oh. So. It's not just four animals, anim, wild animals in our whole. Okay. In our, in our whole. Pla 
on our whole planet, there wasn't just four animals. Oh no, four, four wild percent. Animals. Now, what Karen's got a question for you. Do you, oh, whoops, do you have a joke that you could tell everybody? It's got to be funny. Have you got yes. a funny joke? Go on. Hmm. Let me think for okay. a second. Hmm. I mean, your favorite joke is relevant to this museum. Do you want to tell your favorite joke? When I'm taking no, his picture fun. and I say, tell me a joke, he almost always tells me the same joke, and he has done for years. What character? Or what joke? Sorry, I read the next question out loud. What joke do you tell me? What do you call a one-eyed dinosaur? I don't know. What do you call a one-eyed dinosaur? A do you think he saw us? A do you think he saw us? It's not funny. It's not funny anymore. But it's your favorite joke to tell me. I think it's funny still. Okay. But not everyone will think um, it's funny anymore. And then several people have asked us who we're bounding as today. I'm throwing you off because I'm wearing my raincoat, and my raincoat is not part of the bound. So, let's see. I'm Mao. And I am? Mao's mom. Mao's mom, Maleficent. So it's purple today. And I'm wearing purple tights and if a red raincoat because my raincoat's red. If you don't know who... Classy. If you don't know who Mao is, I'll tell you. She's, she's a pup. Mom. She's from Descendants. Descendants. And she's... Maleficent's daughter. What's a one-eyed dinosaur's dog called? A do you think he saw us Rex? A do you think he saw us Rex? Because Rex is a dog name. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, ha, ha. <laughs> okay, uh, hold on. Don't, please don't lay on the microphone. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we're bounding as um, Mal and Maleficent. Um, have we taken photos today? We've taken some photos and a little bit of video inside the exhibit, so I'll have a look at how that turns out later. Um, and then we're going to take an outfit shot here, I think, too. Oh. <laughs> um, if he doesn't, you know, eat me. Okay, Minim says, scrapbooking question. How do you keep your creative juices flowing? Well, you got to live first and scrapbook second. So i got to get out and do things, and that's why, um, that's how I stay inspired and, and keep doing stuff right I maybe should have had um, the the camera on the other side <laughs> anyway um, yeah so keep doing stuff keep going places so the museum at the other side of the road here is one of my favorite places to go to kind of refresh my creative brain um, the VNA has yeah I mean the VNA is a, 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 a collection of colonialism so it has amazing art pilfered from all over the world <laughs> um, but there we go um, yeah so um, we've got yeah going out and doing stuff having new pictures to to work with that all keeps me inspired yeah and knowing that if you get stuck in a rut just ride it out scrap lift something or Scrap look for yourself and um, go back and, and make a different version of, the, of a layout that you already like if you get stuck. Okay, yes? I've decided my favorite Disney character. Oh, who's your favorite character? Come on then. My I have two. Two? Go on then. They are both from Star Wars. Okay. They are. First one is. Um, doing my first favorite character is Luke Luke Skywalker warm warm, warm. what's a, what's a, a Jedi's favorite temperature warm warm, warm. warm. yes carry on um and oh, you're bouncing the bouncing everything <laughs> what's the second what's the, yeah your second not, favorite not not um the person who teaches Luke um not his Obi-Wan um, yeah, or Yoda, Obi Wan. Obi -Wan. Yeah, they're your favorite. Use the Force, Luke. Okay. Oh, and mm -hmm. there's one that I also can answer. Yeah. What is, what is my favorite crafty thing to do? Daddy? Yes. What's your favorite crafty thing to do? I have a few. Booping. Booping. Um. Taking one piece of scrap and. And putting it on another piece of scrap 
to yeah. make transitions. Yeah. And then s- putting a stencil down and booping. Yeah. And booping blending. is big. And blending. You like ink work, don't you? Yes. You're a mixed media guy. Uh, Georgia says, how are the sea monkeys doing? Pretty good. Michaela also likes booping. You can give Michaela a high five to the camera there. Um. Oh, where are you going, dude? <laughs> Just gets up and walks away. <laughs> um. Dun, dun, dun. Right, Stacy's got a question. Have you ever been to a lighthouse? No. No. But thinking of going to one soon, do you remember? There's a lighthouse on the Thames. And if you watch um, British Sewing Bee, they filmed this year's Sewing Bee um, next to that lighthouse. And there's a diner next to it. Um, and now that things are open again, we're thinking of going there. Um, it's not far from us. Right. Da, 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 da. Um, Georgia says, what color is next on the grid? Purple. Yeah, purple. I kind of wanted to fil- to to photograph the purple last night, but we didn't get ahead. So we just have purple and pink left in our, our pride rainbow, and then we're done. Um, Sebastian has some questions. One, can you say hi to Sebastian and Anakin? Hi, Anakin and Sebastian. Sebastian um, says, do you play Minecraft? Yes. Yes. And um, what is your favorite part of Minecraft? My, why are you asking me about Minecraft? Because Sebastian wants to know. Sebastian's just a, just a little bit younger than you. Or the same age as you. Oh, I thought Sebastian was a... Was the, the Anakin's a baby. Oh, nope. Sebastian... Who's a grown-up? Casey is Sebastian and Anakin's mom. Ah. Uh, so... Pardon me, Casey. Well, we just do all your family tree out here. Sebastian... So, yes, you play um, Minecraft. What's your favorite yes, part of Minecraft? Um, I wanted to also, um, my favorite part is stealing stuff from my dad. Yeah, like building he, together. Oh, you like no. it when you when he builds something and then you steal it. No, I like it when he collects loads and loads of resources and uh-huh. puts it in a random chest at his base. And then I, when he's not on, I just... He's, he's acting out, going over to the chest and stealing it now. So, Sebastian... I'm going over to the chest and then I... I don't know... If, and take stuff out. Sebastian, I don't know if you feel the same way about Minecraft, but um, WB likes Minecraft but can't be bothered with mining. So, he oh, lets God. Daddy do the mining and then he steals it. And then he... And I sometimes craft it. Yeah. I mostly just play in creative. Yeah. Because then I can just go... Okay, I want to have that, so I'm going to get it. Um, yeah. Right, what other questions we got here? Um, dun, 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 sorry, I'm scrolling back through. Okay. Oh, Sebastian had one other question. Have you watched Bluey, and what's your favorite episode of Bluey? You watch Bluey at school sometimes, is that right? Yes, I yeah. do not like it. Oh, it's not your favorite. Okay. Sorry, Sebastian. It's not his favorite. Um, dun, 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 dun. WB, what's, what's your favorite museum? Is this your favorite or is there a different one that's your fave? Science Museum. The Science Museum is your favorite. Uh, but this is second. But this favorite. is second. Okay. Then I think um, it comes to, pla- to the planetarium. Ginny says that her boys are watching Bad Batch and the Mysterious Benedict Society right now. Are we a fan of those shows? So we haven't watched either of them yet. Um, we're not. We're going to wait for Mysterious Benedict Society because it's in our to-read, like the first book is in our to-read pile right now. And since it's so close to being something that we're going to read, I feel like we should wait and um, read it first and then watch it. So we're going to do that. And um, Bad Batch, we haven't watched purely because I haven't had time. <laughs> okay. So we will watch both of those, but we haven't watched yet. Karen says, what do you want to be when you grow up? Why is this just a random question? Because that's the idea. They can ask us all sorts of different questions. About our life. Yeah. Not about Scott Booker. Yeah. Anything they want. Sorry, I'm doing a terrible job as the camera person here. I'm sorry. Then I should be the camera person. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> I, I know what it's like when he holds the iPad for FaceTime, and um, you don't want him to hold it. 
Okay, what are you doing with the microphone now? Right, so what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a... I can, oh, I, he's done holding it now. I can hold it now. Um, I would like to be mm -hmm. a chemist. A chemist. Still into chemistry. Yeah, you haven't changed mine in the last five minutes. Now, you used to say that you wanted to be an astronaut and an imagineer. Still want to be those also. You still you quite like to do that? Okay. All right. So I want to be a chemist. Yeah. That w but my lab, I want to be right next to Disneyland. Uh huh. Then I can be do Imagineers. Yeah. And then I also, whenever there's a, and I can also just talk to NASA from my from my lab. Just of course. Phone. That would be awesome. I can find them. Yeah. And if there's a really big thing like I need to go to space or something, mm -hmm. I can just walk there because I'm in. Because I I'm gonna work for NASA because NASA is also in America. Yep. And so Elaine says, "Have there. you been to the K Kennedy Space Center in Florida?" And yes, you have. And that's where we went to see the space shuttle, and Mummy got very emotional and cried a lot. Why? Because <laughs> I was at a space shuttle in real life. Space shuttle is kind of a big it, deal to me. Was it actually lifting off? No, no, no. We don't we don't use the space shuttle anymore. You could walk through it. It's part of the exhibit there. WB, what's your favorite show to watch? You have a favorite TV show? Angel. Angel. I'm going to watch a slightly edited version of Angel. Let's move on. It's not all appropriate. We skip a lot. <laughs> um, right. Um, Why do we have to skip so okay, much okay. Angel? Because uh, it's really not a tiny kid show. Not a seven-year-old kid show. Anyway. Oh, this one's for me. Georgia wants to know my favorite thing about you and wants to know your favorite thing about me. Who should go first? Me. Okay. Go on then. What's your favorite thing about me? You give awesome cuddles. Ah, yay. So do you, dude. And my favorite thing about you lately, I have lots of favorite things about you, but my favorite thing about you today is how cool it was because we um, uh, we went through the museum today, but we hadn't been to a museum in a long time. So it was a big noticeable difference that this little dude could go in and just read every card in the museum and put it all together and was very excited to learn all the stuff. And that was awesome. Yeah? That was really cool. Because it's been a bit of a gap. Right, there's a question that came from both Allison and Orangina. And they want to know... What dance did we? What dance did you do in class yesterday? What did you dance to yesterday? Um, we danced to um, Friday with words. Yeah. Shut, and we also listened to a thing called. Sh we also did a dance to something called Shutdown. Yeah. But it has but bad was, words. So they so did. We took out the words. Did instrumental to shut down, words. but I didn't know this Friday song, and then he had me look it up, and so he said. You know, it's Friday, it's Saturday, Sunday, what? <laughs> and I was like, sorry, what? And then when mm -hmm. I looked in, yes, that's really how it goes. It's Friday, Saturday, it's Saturday Sunday, Friday, what? Uh, uh, then Saturday, Sunday, yeah. <laughs> Friday, yeah. Then Saturday, Sunday, yeah. <laughs> oh, Georgia knows it. It's Friday, Friday yeah. yeah. Saturday, it's Sunday, Sunday, what? what? <laughs> it's Friday, it's Friday, yeah. Then Saturday, Sunday, yeah. So um, the difference in generations of, he said, can you look up a song called Friday? And I was thinking, The Cure. It's Friday, I'm in love. But that's not what they dance to. It's Friday, yeah. Then <laughs> it's Saturday, Saturday Sunday, Sunday, what? <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what they dance to. And I danced to Jesse J yesterday. I don't know the name of the song. Um, I never know the names of the songs. I'm terrible. Um, right. Oh, Elaine's dad used to edit episodes of Quantum Leap to make, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what, we're, what we do. <laughs> um, oh, see you later, Jenny. Enjoy the pool. Right. Michaela asks, what is your favorite dinosaur? T-Rex. T-Rex? Actually. Is it not the one that sticks its tongue out at you? Which one? Um, what's it called? Diet.
ten something. <laughs> no, mine's a no. velociraptor. Oh, velociraptors. Yes, they're related. Yes, I mean they're dinosaurs, so they're all related. Okay, um, careful, careful. You're you're bouncing everything when you bounce like that. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, what's the other um, what's the other song, that you, the one that you've been singing? Should we should we should we give them a little preview? Together, 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 everyone. Together, come on. Together, together, come on, let's have some fun. Together, we're here for each other every time. Together, together, come on, let's do this right. Oh no. Here and now, it's time for celebration. Finally figured it out. Yeah, yeah. That all our dreams have no limitations. That's what it's all about. We're all in this together. Once we know that we are, we're, we're all stars. stars. I not see that. We're all in this together. And it shows when we stand hand in hand, make our dreams come true. There we go. <laughs> We're all in this Oh no, together. he's in a loop now. Um, George's favorite, uh, Georgia's favorite dinosaur is a Diplodocus, which stemmed from seeing Dippy at the Natural History Museum. And Dippy isn't here anymore, but who is? Oh, you got lots of clapping for that song. Yay. Um, who is? So, um, who is her? Who, which, no, it's Commanders. Oh, no, but which dinosaur is here who's extra special? Sophie. Sophie. And what is special about Sophie? She is the, is the most complete skeleton of a Diplodocus? Stegosaurus. S ske Stegosaurus. Yeah, in the world. So in Sophie, world. yeah, and Dippy the Diplodocus, who used to be in the Hints Hall here, isn't real. It's a cast. Um, but Sophie is real. Yeah. So Sophie is, um, she, obviously she's smaller than a Diplodocus. Um, so when you come to see Sophie, she is right at the bottom of the escalator. And then the escalator takes you through the center of the earth up to volcanoes and earthquakes. And earthquake section is one of our favorites because what happens? Should we tell them or should we just let them show up and not know? There's an earthquake simulator. So you walk into this bit, you're walking through the exhibit and then it takes you around a corner. And when you are, um, when you come around this corner, you're in like a little convenience store in Japan. And then the floor starts rocking and it takes you through the timeline of, um, of an earthquake in Japan. Yeah. Awesome. Um, right. Jennifer says, what is the one thing we must see when we come to London next year? <gasps> oh, gosh. One thing. Just one. Who, who are you bringing with you? What ages have you got? Just grown-ups or have you got kids too? Makes a difference to my answer. <laughs> oh, Deanna says, I'm the one who inspired her to scrap her stories probably 12 years ago. And she loves my classes and hopes I keep doing it forever. Thank you. Um, and when she dies, I'll keep going too. Oh, you're going to take over, are you? Um, Kristen WB says where she lives, there's a giant orange T-Rex on alongside a local highway. And it used to be on a mini golf course, but the golf course is gone and everybody let, wanted the T-Rex to stay. That's amazing. Jennifer's got three kids she's bringing with her to London, 12, 15, and 18. I would say, I mean, like, are, are we into theater? I mean, unless you do lots of Broadway already, I would say you got to come see a show. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, live music will also be back by next year. The museums are amazing. There's one thing um, you could yeah, see. Yeah, Carnaby Street. You could come and see Covent us. Garden. Um... You could come I can never us. choose one thing. That's why I was a tour guide. <laughs> Do all the things. Um, oh, that's funny. Tourists always pick Phantom. I don't ever pick Phantom. <laughs> um, so, oh, 
Orangina says, what's on our wish list for theater? So we have sir, we have a list of things that are booked, don't we? That have been, They keep getting pushed back. Um, so we have, do you remember all the different shows we have booked? What are, yeah. we, what are we seeing? About one a month once the theaters are open <laughs> properly. What are we seeing? Do you remember? We're seeing Lion King, Frozen, Matilda. <laughs> Um, so we have those three booked, and what is it that, what, th which one have you been asking to see? Do you remember? No. W wicked? Yeah, Wicked. So he wants to see Wicked. Um, Mary Poppins is an amazing production. Um, with 12, 15, and 18, you'd be absolutely fine. There is one scene that is positively terrifying. So that's why I haven't taken him to Mary Poppins yet. We've got bed knobs and broomsticks opening soon too. Um, Why is that scene scary, but only in that one? The one um, in Mary Poppins. So the Mary Poppins musical is quite different from um, Mary Poppins the film and Mary Poppins the book. And um, there's a scene in the musical that involves Punch and Judy, and um, Punch specifically. And I don't know about you. Maybe it's different if you grow up with Punch and Judy. Can we not bounce the bench, please? Sure. Um, the I didn't grow up with Punch and Judy, and I saw them as an adult, and I thought they were absolutely terrifying. Please tell me, people who've known Punch and Judy forever, is Punch and Judy always terrifying, or only if you didn't grow up with it and then you're transplanted here? Because Punch and Judy is terrifying. <laughs> um, so there is a scene with a very very intimidating punch and I think it's the stuff of nightmares <laughs> so that's why I haven't taken him um I think he's getting close to it now though um yeah what did you do you've injured yourself by sitting on a bench no I've injured myself by doing this oh okay um so yeah we've got those um was that four that we've got scheduled we've got three that are booked and one more. Karen says punch is not scary. Would he be scary if he was the size of the entire stage? <laughs> um, but there, the tap dancing scene, Step in Time, is absolutely out of this world. And it's I epic. love tap dancing. And he loves tap dancing. It's true. He's. Can you hear him tap dancing? Okay. So that's what, that's what we're seeing at the theater through the end of the year. Um, Leslie says, it's Back to the Future, um, the Back to the Future musical on our list. So we haven't booked it. It hasn't gone into previews, so I haven't seen any reviews yet. Um, but, I, yeah, we're waiting to see if it's good. Same with the, um, I'm assuming that we'll probably see the new Cinderella, the Andrew Lloyd Webber Cinderella, um, which has got Carrie Hope Fletcher in it. Um, but, um, uh, it's interesting because one of the only reviews that came out like super early for Cinderella was, um, was her being absolutely slated, but the media, the critics love to slate her. And so I'm not here for it. We've seen her live and she was really entertaining. So I, I'm not, I'm not ruling it out. And that theater is right around the corner from the dance studio. We have Matilda on one side of the dance studio and Cinderella on the other side. Um, Lion King's just further down the road. They're all pretty close together. <laughs> um, right. Did I miss anything else? Um, oh, Elaine says Back to the Future was on in Manchester. Yeah, I haven't looked at the reviews there. Dude, 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 dude. Okay. Um, I want to go underneath your head. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know why the critics... Well, I, I, I think I can see why the critics like Carrie. I think just because she's not... Um, She's not a traditional, you know, order from a catalog kind of leading lady. She's kind of changing the game a little bit, and I think that's okay. <laughs> she's not changing it all that much. She's not exactly radical. <laughs> um, but she's just, yeah, not from the catalog. I like it. We saw her in um, Christmas is Sword, which was unexpectedly epic. Cassie took us to that a couple years back, and I kind of thought it was going to be cheesy on a pantomime level and it wasn't it was really well done so that was cool um 
and not that pantomime is a bad thing, but just that pantomime here, Americans don't have pantomime. So I, this is what I wrote my thesis on actually, <laughs> um, was pantomime being the difference between British humor and American humor. That's what I did my master's in. Um, and so um, pantomime is a, a tradition here at Christmas and a little bit at Easter too, um, with a really, um, a really stylized form of theater. It's very rough around the edges. The audience shouts back, um, has a lot of roots in Commedia dell'arte and all of this sort of stuff. And it involves um, uh, basically, well, it involves a lot of drag work um, and like your, um, your villain, your female villain is pretty much always played by a man in drag. Um, and it's hilarious. Now see, Elaine says it's mainly for kids. Living here, I will disagree because I have been to many a grown up panto that I would not take a child to. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, definitely not just for kids here. Um, yeah, a lot of jokes, a lot of um, stuff going back and forth from the audience. And uh, we don't really have that in, um, in, in American family theater not at all yeah Peter Pan or other young um, male ingenue um, roles tend to be played by women yeah so it's always in drag and um, well men play women and yeah so yeah there's a lot of a playing against yeah yeah and um, Kristen says is it really cold in London today it's brutally hot in Boston it's not like it's not cold, but I'm not warm with my coat on. It's fine. I've got tights on. Like, it's not hot. It's I've definitely not hot. I've got <laughs> it's in the short middle. Sleeves. He's got short sleeves and he's okay. And so I'm still warm. That probably means it's in the 70s or something, American style, if you want to be in Fahrenheit. I think it's probably, what is it, about 18? 15, 16, 17? Okay. Somewhere around there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, but I'm mostly in a raincoat because it's rain. <laughs> um. Yeah, Karen says, too much innuendo for, to be just for kids. Yes, Elena. Okay, so Rocky Horror definitely comes out of the panto tradition. Yes. So Rocky Horror is, is the one thing that in American culture you could reference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like the, uh, this, the sort of stuff that goes on at the panto here. When I left America, would have been picketed outside the theater. So, you know. <laughs> I did. I was in the cast of Rocky Horror for a while. And I did a lot of midnight screenings and all of that. So, yeah. <laughs> um, doesn't bother me. But it bothers some people. I don't know. Here, it's all good fun. What's this? That is a seed that has come off a tree. Can you find which tree it came off of? Ah. Oh, it might not even be a seed. We're under an evergreen, so that might just be um, what happens when that branch comes off and dries out and it's not green anymore. No, it, that's what happens. Do you want to show them? Yeah. Okay. Oh. It looks like a bug. Okay, hold on, hold on. It looks like a bug, doesn't it? It does look a little like a bug. Okay. Oh, Elaine says she did mean mainly for kids. Sorry. <laughs> um, yep. Okay. Anything else? I mean, I did... I, I took... I took WB to sing along a Frozen a while back. Um, how many years ago now? Must have been Christmas 2019, I think, maybe? Might have been. I didn't, yeah, I, th I want to say Christmas 2019. I took him um, to the Prince Charles Cinema to see, um, <laughs> to see Sing Along Frozen. And it was introduced and hosted by Elsa the queen, <laughs> um, who was a, a very elderly drag queen, who was amazing <laughs> and had pipes. She could sing. <laughs> so that was, that was great. Um, right. So any last questions and then we'll wrap up and go, oh my goodness, we've been live almost an hour. That's crazy. Um, anything else you want to tell them before we go? Oh, I wanted to tell you. Yes. I love mommy. Aww. I love my mommy. <laughs> He's a sweetie. Okay. And I love all of you too. Oh, I this lady has too. been here at the museum lately. Yay. Oh, and also, 
so. I yes. saw my friends. Yes, we did run into some school friends because school, we aren't, um, if you're in the States, I know you guys are mostly out for summer already. We're not out for summer. We just have one day off because there is a teacher training day. Um, so we go through to the almost the end of July. All right. Do you want to wave goodbye? Do you want to sing anything? Bye. No. <laughs> okay. He's gone into his own imaginary language. Now. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. I will be live at, back to normal type live on Friday. Thanks so much. I'll see you soon. Bye. I love you all. Do you want to click the little X up there to turn, I love our, you turn all. us off? I wish we didn't have to stop. I love you all. Goodbye.